Hi everybody, it's me, Mallory Donahue of the Self Zone Wardrobe, uh, live here with you for today's topic. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so sparkly. How to sew with crazy ass sequin fabric. So I will let people join in and uh, kind of let everybody join before I get started showing you how to do this. This is my dress for fancy month that I made. And I guess I should have just like taking the easy road and just dump my broadcast about the dress <laughs> instead of like doing a whole new topic. So anyway, uh, I will I will do a live broadcast about the dress. Make sure to say hi if you're watching. I'm not seeing any comments right now. Uh, if this is one of those days where I don't see comments, it's gonna kind of stink because I have a feeling that people are gonna ask me some questions about this. Ah, there we go, okay. So Hillary's here, great. So Hillary uh, is my sister. She's watching my kids today. My husband is immobilized at the moment. I mean, not completely, he's getting better. But I came to, uh, I dropped my, my kids off at my sister's house and I was wearing like an old maternity dress that may or may not have been laundered. I have no idea. Uh, and no, nothing else under it except for shoes because I couldn't get my, my stuff together this morning uh, with everything going on. And now, though, look at me. I came home and I was like, what am I going to wear? You know, I can get something. They can't smell me, you know. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I've got, I've got this fancy dress that I made. So I'll just wear this. Anyway, so, yeah, I, that was fine. So hi, Louise. Hi, Cassandra. Hi, Lindsay. Good to see you. And hi, Zelda. Mommy says hello. I hope you're being very good for Auntie Hillary. Okay, so what other label is this you know what what other you know what should be on the bolt for this fabric other than the label crazy ass sequin fabric okay I think it's I think it's the best label here is a dress that I made for Zelda out of the crazy ass sequin fabric okay and uh, it was a ton of fun to make it didn't take me very long I made it like the day before and the and a little bit the day of the wedding that we went to and actually the the things that I don't like about this dress have nothing to do with the sequins. I, I made a couple other mistakes and hopefully um, I can uh, do a blog on that uh, before too long here. But this dress is super simple. You know, you can get as complex or as simple as you wish for, you know, fancy things. So it's got the crazy ass sequin fabric just attached to a knit top. And I did, um, I didn't bring it up here, but I did, um, include a belt with this okay and I'll talk about why I did that now Zelda didn't like wearing the belt but the belt was a good idea and I'll talk to you about like why and how to reapply sequins and things like that so yeah it's just a knit top and bonjour Yvonne uh, and it is surged okay to the sequin fabric with a Guess what? Guess what stitch? A three thread narrow, okay? So yeah, this, this dress is super simple in terms of like construction. And then I was also really proud because I cover stitched uh, the neckline and everything and it did a great job. This is a knit that had ribbon like applied to it. And oh, mom's watching now. Uh, we've had this fabric for a really long time. We have it in like three colors, I think, or maybe four, white, a green, a blue, a pink. Um, so anyway, we just had enough of this fabric, just enough to make Zelda a little bodice out of this. So yeah, um, it, it is applied though to this knit top with a three thread narrow. So this fabric is, um, you know, pretty pricey in terms of fabric and uh, especially when you're kind of making something that you wouldn't necessarily wear every day. So it's from Joann's and I got it for, uh, you know, I, of course I used a coupon, okay, um, and it was $25 a yard originally. So I bought a half yard because I was making something for my three-year-old, right? So this is what um, the width of a half yard, you know, looks like it's 18 inches, right? So I cut, you know, the skirt off from above here. So let's talk a little bit about sequin fabric. There are lots of different types of sequin fabrics. So, um, this is, uh, this here is a dot sequin, okay? The, um, the, uh, 
sequins are glued on to like a sparkle mesh, okay? This stuff's actually not very, I mean, you know, in the on the scale of, you know, d difficult fabrics to sew with. This stuff isn't terribly difficult to sew with. These sequins aren't gonna like break your needle. Um, I You're not gonna like remove them from seam allowance first or anything like that. I, um, we, we construct, with the with this sequin fabric, you know, many times on the serger, depending on what we're doing, um, it's it's great. So anyway, this is dot sequin. It's on a sparkle mesh. You can see on the back that the mesh is sparkly. But let's talk about this crazy ass sequin fabric. So here's the front. Ooh, they're like fish scales, right? Let's show the back. So it's a mesh, okay? And you can see the stitching lines. Can everybody see those stitching lines? where the sequins have been sewn on, okay? So these sequins were probably on like a really long string and then, you know, somehow whatever machine, you know, did this with, you know, or, or person was feeding these sequins into the machine or something like that, they got stitched on and they're stitched on in these horizontal rows, okay? These are very large sequins for uh, sequined fabric, okay? I'd say they're the size of a nickel or something like that, okay? Um, there is a direction to this, okay? The sequins, you know, all need to be going like down, and it is rather sheer, okay? So I didn't line the skirt of this dress for my three-year-old because I put her in pink leggings. I just planned on it. I was like, she's not, you know, she is not of the age where I would be comfortable uh, just like putting her in a skirt and underwear. It's just you know, why even, why even worry, you know, about that? So I always, I always put her in shorts or leggings. We put her in pink leggings here. Okay. And actually she wore light up shoes too. Okay. So if you are though, if you're going to make like a gown for yourself or for a costume, like, you know, for a person, you will want to line this with something and it can be lined with just about anything. And actually the project that, that I'm sort of doing with this, you know, today, um, it's a little funky, but I'm actually gonna line it with a knit, with this floral knit. So I'm just gonna put this on top of myself here. And then when I put the sequins over it, um, look at, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Look, so that does show that it's sheer, okay? So don't go just like making yourself um, a garment and expect it not to be sheer. Now, how cool would this be in like a tank top or something for an adult person? Maybe with a cool bra underneath of it, like a pink bra or a red bra or, you know, something like that. So there's, there's a range of things you can do, but I do want to let you know it's sheer and it's on this mesh. What is so cool about mesh? Why is that? Uh, how can we use that to our advantage? Mesh will not ravel when you cut it. Okay. So it is, um, it's not something that has to be finished, okay? So let's take a look at the seam allowances on my little sequin dress here, okay? The, this fabric does not stretch either. I'm telling you it's on a mesh. It does not stretch across. The mesh has been, um, the mesh has been stabilized by those sequin, you know, uh, rows, okay? Oh, Lindsay says she has a thrifted sequin tank, but it scrapes up my armpits when I wear it. Uh, let's let's see if we can do something about that. I'd love to see it. But look, the mesh does stretch a little bit vertically, um, so that's that's important. But it doesn't stretch horizontally. So I did seam this with a straight stitch, and then you'll see that my seam allowances here are unfinished. The mesh is rather soft. It's not going to ravel. I could have gone with a three TN and finished that off. That would be okay. Um, but Honestly, I mean, it just it just felt nice enough and flexible enough that I thought, let's just leave it like that, it's less bulk. I didn't want to trim it super close because I wanted there to be strength there, especially with like a three-year-old wearing it, okay? So, uh, oh yeah, mom says two solutions to scraping armpits. So yeah, Lindsay, post a photo of your sequin tank in the group after this and tag mom and me and we'll help you out with that, okay? So it kind of depends on like the sequins and where it's scraping you in the armpit and all that jazz. Okay, so this is the type of seam we're doing. Uh, like I said, 
On some sequin fabrics, I don't find the need to cut the sequins out of the armpits. And actually, there's one other sequin fabric over in our box that I wish I would have gotten out. It's what I made my maternity outfit uh, out of for Common Threads last year. And I didn't feel the need to cut the sequins out of the seam allowance on that one because they were so small and the serger took care of them. But with this one, it's a different story. Okay, so a few things to consider when you are going to cut a, cut something, cut your pattern. Oh, let me move my packing tape. I've been packing orders and cutting uh, hundreds of yards of cotton organdy. Uh, so <laughs> thank you all for ordering them, ordering cotton organdy. Okay, um, when you cut this stuff out, you're gonna cut it out from the back side, but do be aware of that directional nature of the sequins and when you lay it down try to smooth the sequins out so they are going in the direction they need to be and then make sure not to like flip your pattern pieces up and down it's uh, you'll you'll be sorry if you do that okay and then I'd say that I'm probably gonna get a couple comments here that people would maybe do this a little differently than me but um, this is what this is what works for me I found it to be quite easy and actually it sort of demonstrates our um, some of the concepts here so I'm just lining this up I do have this gridded cutting mat and actually like I said the sequins are sheer so I can see the I can see the grid through it it's kind of nice um, and then I'm just gonna I just drafted this little skirt pattern just now and I just want to make sure it okay it fits on here okay this is a little skirt pattern for a, I think she's seven or six, and I had her mom measure her waist and then measure from her waist to hem, and I told her mom to do it over her hip or over her butt, uh, whichever one she thought would need like more allowance. Some little kids, you know, don't have very, you know, round bottoms, and some do, and this little girl does have a round bottom, so this, this person is a friend of mine. I was like, measure over her hip or over her bottom, whichever. And she goes, oh, girlfriend has a butt. And I'm like, okay, you know, so, so depending on the kid, I just want to make sure it was long enough. But since I only bought a half yard of this fabric, I actually don't have enough of the fabric to go, um, to be long enough to just make it out of the sequin. Okay, so I showed you my little underskirt here with the knit. So my plan is to do this knit under it and then I'm gonna put this sequin ruffle, and so then there's going to be like a sequin ruffle coming out from the crazy ass sequin fabric, like underneath. So it'll just be, you know, possibly one of the most sparkly and ridiculous garments ever, okay? Uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, since that stuff is so sheer, maybe I'll just do it all out of the sequin. But I do like to preserve my sequins. Um, you know, I don't want them, don't want them hidden. Uh, so anyway, okay, this all works. This is how I'm going to cut this out. I'm lining up the bottom of my skirt pattern here. I'm putting it into the selvage, okay, of the sequin fabric. So there's this mesh selvage here, which you're definitely going to save. Having uh, long strips of mesh like this can be so useful in your sewing, but I'm going to put it a little bit below so that I don't cut off any of those nice round sequins, okay? And I am going to talk about how to hem this, okay? All right, so my first skirt, I do, I cut two of these, right? Put it down below there. Um, pattern weights, whatever you use. These are big washers from the hardware store that ZD let me decorate when I was when I was just a lass. Okay, so what I don't want to basically when I'm down here, I just don't just trying to preserve since I can see where those sequins are. Okay, that's what I'm doing. All right, and ready to go. I'm just gonna cut this with my rotary cutter. Keep my hand behind my rotary cutter. Okay, so people who are a little afraid of using the rotary cutter, you know, um, I get it, but keep your hand behind it and you won't cut yourself. Now up here on my waistband, or it's not my waistband, but at the waist of the skirt, okay, I'm going to cut as close to a row of sequins as I can. So I'm going to cut off those sequins. You'll see this when I lift the pattern up. 
what that's gonna leave me is just mesh seam allowance, okay? So I will I will show you, maybe in my next one I can uh, pick up the camera. Okay, hand behind the rotary cutter. I'm cutting along that line. So that I'm cutting off those top, oop, top sequins. Okay, and then when you are sewing on camera, you can mess up your pattern, which you're not supposed to do. Okay, and then just cutting into that mesh. All right, so what's the deal here, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else? My rotary cutter cut right through this stuff. So if you have a sharp rotary cutter, um, just use it. Uh, Anna says, "Cut." I got cut resistant gloves. I just, I just am always cutting and sewing and cutting and sewing and da 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 da. So I don't use the gloves. But if you're somebody who is worried about cutting yourself, do it. Uh, when I was on Fawns and Porter, Love of Quilting, they always used it. It's kind of like a, you know, cover their ass thing. Okay, so look, I've, I've got little bits of sequin fabric here. And I'm going to have a lot of little bits of sequins around my sewing room. So when I remove this pattern here, because of where I cut, did you see me um, move this a little bit? Uh, if you swipe the comments out of the way, you can see when I moved this out of the way, there are all these loose sequins here, and because of where I cut, I got a clean mesh seam allowance up there that I don't actually have to trim. So, you know, you don't want to be inaccurate in your cutting or anything like that, but if you can kind of fudge it up to the next row so that you cut right below that stitching line of sequins, you're going to have this mesh seam allowance. Ta-da, all done. You don't have to cut any sequins out of it. That's just really wonderful. The bottom, there's a little bit of mesh showing under the bottom. We'll trim that away later, okay? Uh, the bottom hem of this skirt is not curved yet, okay? I cut it straight to just preserve those sequins. You'll notice on Zelda's dress, the hem is a little curved. That's always a little bit more pleasing to the eye. It just hangs a little better, okay? And so the sequin rows, uh, as we get away from the middle and we come up to the sides where it's curved, they get staggered a little bit, and I'll show you that. Okay, so I have my one skirt layer here, and there are sequins and little bits of sequins everywhere. You need to look at how your sequins are attached to your fabric. Okay, so I've, no, I've mentioned that these are sewn on. Hi, Heather. <laughs> I've mentioned that these are sewn on. So we don't, um, I really do think that every sequin on here is technically like secured to the fabric. So I could like cut the, you know, I could cut the thread, but what would make me more comfortable is if I just cut the sequin away. And so that's actually what I'm going to do after I cut my next one. All right, next. And once again, placement of the pattern. Oh, I do want to mention this pattern, pattern piece, this very simple little girl skirt pattern piece. It is something that maybe would have come to you commercially as something to cut on the fold because it is symmetrical. When you're working with a fabric like this, uh, don't don't fold it, okay? <laughs> I mean, good luck if you do because it will the sequins will just get in the way. So what you're gonna do is retrace, okay? You can lay your, your lay, lay your tracing paper over. Just make it easy on yourself. I really wouldn't even recommend to go here and then like flip it over. Unless you're feeling really confident, I mean, you know, you do you, but definitely a whole pattern piece is much easier to cut out of this stuff, okay? So I'm going to go, I'm going to line up my skirt once again right at the top of one of those rows so that I can cut that off and have my mesh seam allowance in, you know, no time. No, no extra trimming here, okay? So lining it up with those rows. It's a lot to think about, um, but when you start to understand the characteristics of, of some of this fabric, it's, it's not too bad. Um, also, this is why I think Fancy Month and like talking about costuming and things like that can be so informative, even for 
uh, a home sewist who's not making things for other people or is like, I'm never making sequin stuff. That's weird, you know. Uh, when you have to kind of deal with the challenges of a strange fabric, you'll find yourself being a lot more able to deal with, you know, other weird stuff, okay? Um, especially home deck. Home deck fabrics get weird, you know, and I love them. Okay, so once again, hand behind the rotary cutter. And sharp rotary cutter blade is cutting right through these plastic sequins. It's not a problem. I actually would prefer a rotary cutter on this to scissors. Well, and that's me all the time, okay? So, big surprise there. Okay, cutting right along that line. So if you have a pattern piece that's curved up there, you know, you'll just line it up as best you can to eliminate work. And you'll, you'll see what the work is here in a second. All right, and then down here at the hem, so I'm up in the fabric now, I'm not down in the mesh selvage. I might be inclined on this to cut just a little lower, okay? So I missed some of my sequins, and we're gonna trim up that hem later, okay? So just, just keep that in mind as you go along. You don't wanna, you don't wanna lose a whole row of sequins. All right. Did I cut that side? Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, and then if you look here on my table, I'm gonna move my fabric away. And look, do you see that like row of sequins that is, uh, that is left there, okay? Oh look, this is good. So you can see these three sequins that got left up top. I missed the row, I missed the little, you know, um, little threads there just a little bit. And actually, I think I did cut them. I'm just gonna take them off. But that's, that's the work that I was eliminating for myself, okay? So that mesh is available. Now, I've got, you know, some pretty nice sewing machines here, uh, right? I have uh, Baby Lock sewing machines that are very strong. I'm looking for my scissors, and this is, uh, you know, oh, there, there they are. Uh, I've got really nice sewing machines that would sew through this, these sequins. Like, I, could, I can run these sequins through my sewing machine, no problem. I, I do that a lot. We have sewn with a lot of sequin fabric, and you know, dot sequin and even some smaller uh, little sequins that are plastic, you know, we can just run those right through. But these sequins, if they were to get caught up in a seam allowance, would just be, I mean, they would be in the way. They are, oh look, I can measure them. They are three quarters of an inch in diameter. So if you were to get these caught up into a, uh, a seam allowance, that would just be no good. Oh, and I'm sorry if I'm cutting out for anybody. This will be uploaded afterwards uh, for you to watch later. Sorry about that. Um, that does happen. Okay, so I was talking to you about how my machines could handle this, but I'm not going to uh, incorporate three quarter of an inch sequins into my seam allowance. So what am I doing right now? I am cutting the sequins out of my seam allowance. And if I was a, you know, a really awesome sewing blogger, I would have done one of these ahead of time, but I didn't because uh, my husband decided he had to go to the ER on Monday and then da 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 da, you know. And everyone was so awesome and bought so much cotton organdy that I was cutting it. But I am cutting these sequins out of my seam allowance because of how they're spaced, okay? It actually makes it really nice. I'm sort of just like cutting one sequin away. I'm going to show you sewing on this, okay? I'm giving myself around a quarter of a th or a three-eighths inch like seam allowance, okay? If your machine likes to eat fabric, then you might want to cut more sequins away. And what would this do for you? It would give you more seam allowance to work with. We did a podcast on seam allowance. Seam allowance is not just about durability after wear, which is an important thing. And I don't know if um, if Heather is still uh, watching. She's an excellent quilter. Uh, quilters, you're gonna be like, oh, I use a quarter inch seam allowance all the time. You know, a quilt's a little different. It gets pieced together. It gets applied to, you know, a batting and a backing, and then it gets quilted. So those seams don't see the same wear and tear. The fabric that you use when you piece a traditional quilt is some tightly woven, 
uh, you know, quilting cotton, and that's gonna be, you know, just fine with a quarter inch seam allowance. And a lot of people like to use a straight stitch foot when they are quilting, okay? So it's just a little different. So what seam allowance does in garment sewing is it is actually a helper as you construct. It's not just like for fun. Okay, yeah, mom said to, to share my technique of cutting the sequins. Mom, I'm stalling, okay? <laughs> Okay, so I have one seam allowance, let's call it cleaned, okay? You don't want to cut too far inside, like outside of the seam allowance into the, the fashion area of your, of your skirt, of your garment, okay? I'm making sure I'm cutting the right one. Because you want the sequins, you want it to look seamless. You don't want to look like there's a, a hole in your sequins or something like that, okay? Now, we could always sew some sequins back on. Um, or something like that. But let's talk about my technique of cutting them away. I don't want to cut the thread. I would feel uncomfortable doing that, okay? So these sequins, I'm going to try and hold them up to the camera here a little bit. It, I, they are very sparkly. They're sewn on with just a little loop of like monofilament uh, thread here. And I'm going to cut the sequin to open up the hole. Okay, so that I can pull the sequin away. Huh. <laughs> All right, so that is what I'm doing. Um, uh, right on the edge here, look, one of mine was, it was like halfway cut off, and then I'm just gonna cut one more in, okay? So when we're talking about seam allowances and planning your garment, using a, maybe using a commercial pattern or something, you gotta think about this. You might wanna do a couple of samples on your machine, like cut a couple of, um, commensurate, you know, curved pieces that you could sew together as a test and see how your machine handles them. See how many sequins in you would like to uh, cut off, okay? And then, yeah, so I'm just, I mean, that's all I'm doing is snipping into the hole of the sequin, that's how these are attached, and going at it. Some sequins have holes in a different place, okay? Uh, these holes are in the top of this uh, the top of the sequin. It's like a spangle, you know hanging down someone asked if the dress made noise Yes, it does <laughs> and that was very exciting for Zelda Okay, so she she liked it uh, that the dress was making noise when she was walking around in it uh, Also, I did not have her travel in this dress <laughs> <laughs> she did not go in the car seat in this dress. That was uh, not not something that I thought would be comfortable for her. And also, I spent a bunch of time on the dress, and I didn't want to, you know, have it get uh, messed up in the, you know, when she was in the car seat. Okay, so we're almost done with this side of the dress. Like I said, would have uh, had this little part planned out here. I am excited though to maybe make this for this little girl. Like I said, she's she's about seven. Um, and then, you know, if her mom, if she likes it, I thought, you know, I'll tell her that if her daughter grows out of it and it's still in okay shape to just give her, um, give it back to us so that Zelda can wear it when she's older. This is kind of what we've been, um, <laughs> what Sam and I do a little bit. Okay, so now this, Seam allowance is what I would call cleaned. Okay, I'm gonna put, oh, when I put it against my body, I think it's a little bit easier to see. So it's not exactly even, the seam allowance, right? Okay, because the, the sequins are, um, they're staggered. Okay, they're every other, they're, they're like fish scales to give good coverage and good movement. But when we go over to the sewing machine, we're going to work with that. And then this, this might take me just a minute Nobody get car sick as we go over to the machine. Okay, I'm gonna take this over. And let's see, <laughs> let's see how this goes. It's always fun when I'm uh, doing a live video all by my lonesome. Oh, you can, you can see, whoops. Uh, see one of the less clean areas of our sewing room. 
All right. The, the hard part about doing a live video like this is that I want to see your comments and I do not want things in mirror image, right? Because I'm showing you the sewing machine. Whoops. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, maybe I'll just disconnect this for now. Cause I, ah, there we go. There we go. Now I can see it. Okay. Let me adjust the camera. This is why sewing shows um, don't, <laughs> don't do stuff like this. All right, right now on my destiny, okay, I have the edge joining foot on. I'm going to take it off. And I love this foot. I used it a ton on my, uh, on the top I'm wearing, or excuse me, the, the shirt dress I'm wearing, and Trish said she loves it. Uh, but on this stuff, this is the end foot. It can allow sequins or anything thick to ride underneath. Do you see that? How that is, you know, kind of grooved. Um, and then there's the J foot, okay, here. That's just normal with no groove. So do you see groove and no groove? Okay. I'm actually going to use the J foot, like the normal foot, okay? Oh, that's disconnected, so you can just move that, Mom, if you want to move this out of your way. Thank you. You could not get me on film. ZD to the rescue. Um, I can't move it. Okay. <laughs> ZD is going to come film. So I'm just going to use the normal foot. These sequins aren't that thick. Yeah, so that's, so that's why I want to show them that. Okay, and then right sides together. I, You know, sewing with sheer fabric can be so convenient because you can see through it, okay? You can pin these layers together if you want, but honestly, I don't. Or clip. Clip, anything like that. But I need to be able to actually get in here as I'm sewing. So, I don't, all right? Um, this is also a fairly, <laughs> one of the most simple seams, right? It's very straight. It's not, you know, going to cause a lot of issues. Okay. Um, and I have got my knee lift. So do you see my hands here and I'm raising my foot? I'm doing that with my knee and it's so very convenient. So I was talking to you all about seam allowance. I'm going to put my mesh under here so that the edge of my foot is on my mesh. This supports my fabric the best. And then I can move my needle. People have this capability on some of the simplest machines, okay? So if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have a destiny you know, or whatever, like you don't have to have a destiny, okay? On a very simple machine, if you choose your straight stitch and you have variable stitch width, a lot of times that will move your needle for you. So my needle is actually in a pretty good place, but I could, I'm gonna shift it over just a little bit to the right. Okay, look, oh, mom, you just, no, you were there, sorry. This is 0.75 millimeters off of center is what I just did. And then I am gonna start on the fabric Okay, so that's a tip if for those of you who have machines that like to eat your fabric. You could backstitch here if you wanted to. At the beginning, where the waistband's going to be, it's not as big of a deal to backstitch. Now, at the end of my seam, where I'm not going to finish the, the, um, the seam and it's not going to get sewn over again or anything, I am going to backstitch. Okay, and then what I do here, everybody... It's, it's not, not as difficult and intimidating as a lot of, as a lot of people might think is I just move those sequins out of the way. Well, and you've tested. I have. And I have also tested like, right. This is what, this is what like sewing blogging is, is like, right. The blogger has tested for you That's true. <laughs> a little bit, you know, true. They've, they, they've given you those Except tips. Except everybody doesn't have your fabric and your mm -hmm. machine and your thread or whatever. Well, and I, yeah, I hesitate to say something like it's easy because that's, of course, anything's easy if you've done it enough. Right. But I do want to say that I don't think it's quite as intimidating as, as a lot of people make it out to be, or, or maybe they just see the fabric in the store and they just automatically think I could never sew that. So it's a good thing if you need to swing these sequins out of the way. Why? I'm having mermaid dreams. Yes, I know. <laughs> Look at that. It's a good thing if you have to swing these out of the way because 
That means that once the seam is finished, they'll swing back and cover the seam. So you don't want to cut too far away. Yeah, I guess you don't want to make like it. I feel like I'm shaking on this camera. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excusing myself. Okay. Uh oh, got a dog. Uh oh. We'll hurry up. <laughs> All right, look, I'm kind of, can you all see that sequin that could possibly get in my way? And like I said earlier, um, it's not that the machine would have trouble with the sequin. It is that I'm putting my needle on down. It wasn't on down. So now when I stop sewing, it's going to stop down. Uh, it's not that the machine would like break a needle going through this plastic sequin because it wouldn't, but it would get caught in the seam allowance and then flip out weird and that would not look good and the fabric is $25 a yard so you want it to look nice right oh coming up against another sequin I'm using my finger uh I could use a stylus I could use a straight pin I could use a small pair of scissors I could use anything like that oh that one's the bottom Sneaking layer back in there yep okay so you just gotta show his boss all right this is a very light pattern piece because it's for a little girl. If you are making this for an adult person, make sure to take the weight off of your off of your project. Okay, do you all see how this isn't quite lining up down here? My hems? Okay. That's because I cut them unevenly, all right? Because I'm going to go back in and trim this down. So I actually gave myself a little extra length on one of the pieces. Remember the piece that wasn't into my selvage? So the shorter piece is actually the length that I had planned on it being. But I just gave myself a little extra there. So it's okay to do that. So think about that if you're on uh, the hem of a sleeve, the hem of a skirt. Oop, I'm getting off a little bit there. Okay, or anything like that. Now I'm down here, and I am. I'm going to backstitch. I'm sorry if my hand is in the way. I'll go forward. I backstitch that much because I don't know how much I'm going to be cutting off. And it just keeps everything nice and secure. This is at the bottom. This is where nothing is going to be sewn over. Okay. I cut my thread with my little button. Look at that seam. Okay. If you're worried about sewing on mesh or what kind of needle should I use? This stuff is just holes, everybody, okay? Uh, your needle, as long as it's new and high quality, the type might not matter so much. I feel like what matters more is making sure that the fabric is supported, okay, uh, in, on your throat plate. I'm going to unfold this. And when I sort of smooth these sequins out... <gasps> Disappearing seam? It, it will disappear for me. If, if I'm, you know, just really unhappy with oh, there's like a hole there or something, I could go back and sew a sequin on there. It's probably not going to matter on such a sparkly garment, okay? So um, I'm not going to do the other seam for you, but I am going to go show you a little bit about hemming. Okay, so we can just go to the cutting table. Are we getting any questions, Mom, that I should answer? Um, or people just like loving looking very at Very interesting. This is my first... Live minutes. broadcast, okay. Love your pre-testing. It's like watching. I can't see because this thing's mm -hmm. over. Oh, it's okay. Everything is okay. always perfect. So. No big questions, just some comments. Good, good. So here we have this skirt. It's me and the dog and Mallory and <laughs> I have the monitor at my back. Okay. Yes. So I have my skirt cut here. I'm not going to cut on this skirt yet because I'm not finished with it, okay? Hemming is the last thing you are going to do. I posted some pictures of hemming Zelda's dress, and here is the hemming tool that you use on the sequin fabric, all right? So check out what I did here. I, oh gosh, um, I, like I said, I made this the morning of the wedding yeah. we were going to. So this Jasmine here is there's very Jasmine. intent on watching what's going on. So look, I just trimmed the mesh away. I might just be making this worse. Um, I trimmed the mesh away from that bottom row of sequins when I put my hand right. behind it. So you can see it. So the sequins are your so hem. The sequins are my hem, right? Not, not roughly cut sequins, but you know, beautiful round hole sequins, okay? So before this, um, this this had another row. Oh, look, here's a sequin that had gotten cut off That's with my one. rotary cutter. I could have cut that away. 
cut that off the mesh. Here's a little one. It didn't make that big of a difference. But when I look at um, this, I can show you all. There's definitely some, some parts of this that I will for sure be cutting away. Cause look, these sequins, they're all like cut in half, right? Do you see, yeah, that you can see that. It's so funny, it looks totally different in person than it does on camera. So when I flip- it's, I'm getting seasick. Like, yeah. I'm mermaid sick, yeah. <laughs> when I flip this over, here's the row of stitching that's holding on the half cut off sequins. And I'll just go into it here. I will just be cutting the mesh right below my last row of whole sequins. So look what we get. We're gonna get whoop, little mermaid scales, right? Give me my phone because there's a question about two-way sequins. In okay, it. here. Oh yeah, you look at it. Um, da, 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 da. Two-way sequins. It's like third one up, I think, or so. Third or fourth one up. This is interesting, I've never sewn on sequin fabric. Watching this old house. <laughs> uh, you might not be getting all the comments. Yeah, I don't phone. know. Um, well, here. So I don't know if to, I can go well, back to it. I'll, we'll go back and answer it. Uh, you know, I'll write to them. Should be... Two ways. Oh, yeah, she's just saying this should be helpful in sewing. Okay. There's not much difference in treating two-way sequins as just any sequin because you just want to make sure that they're free of being in in the seam allowance. So check that out, okay? Look at that, that's gonna be my hem. Okay, I Adina said that she had missed the first part of the live broadcast. Uh -huh. I didn't really talk about styles that would be best for this yet, but maybe that's a good idea to talk about. So this fabric, you want something with as few seams as possible, okay? You do not wanna be making a princess seam uh, spangly sequin thing. Okay. Now this is dot sequin. I mentioned this at the beginning of the broadcast. Are you looking for some sparkle and something a little, a little easier to sew with? This stuff acts like fabric. The sequins are so thin that your machine can go right through them. We do not cut the sequins out of the seam allowance on this. Okay. So, uh, just keep that in mind. It's on a mesh kind of like we talked about before. Uh, technically the hem would not need to be hemmed. You know, it, it could just be cut cause it's on this, uh, kind of like knit mesh sparkle mesh. So for something like this, like if I was going to make this for an adult, you know, a, a when we think about styles like that, I would make like a, a two pattern piece skirt, okay? Or if it was gonna be up here, I might choose to do something else with the bodice above the bust line so that I wouldn't have to have these like in my armpits or something like that. Now actually, this stuff isn't quite as scratchy as probably what Lindsay is referencing with her tank top because this will just hang down. But uh, yeah, I would do I would do something real simple. This stuff will also kind of move on you. It's fun. Yeah, question. Needle sticks to the dot sequin because... Because the dot sequins are on there with glue. That's totally correct. So don't treat it with heat in any way. Do not press this. Do not dry this. Do not dry clean this, okay? Now your needle shouldn't actually like stick to it. Okay, it's not like the needle will go, well, I guess it could. She's getting glue build up. She, yes, so it won't do it like the first time you immediately, you know, you put your first seam in there. If you get glue build up on your needle over time, you can clean it with an alcohol wipe, okay? Uh, you could change your needle. You can use a needle that has a coating on it, that uh, of like a denim needle that has like a Teflon coating on it. That is something that denim needle has, denim needles have. Now on the serger, Okay, we just surge the crap out of this stuff. I mean, we make things, uh, and I don't know, the serger must move so fast that okay. it just... I do think that's it. It's so fast it doesn't get any... Yeah, it's so fast that it, we don't have a problem with it. I never find myself needing to, like, change that out. So, I guess that there might be different grades of dot sequin, but when someone says they get glue build up, it's going to happen over a long period of time. You should be changing your needle. It's not like you're going to immediately like sew into this and then like globs of glue are going to come out of the fabric. Cause I think that sometimes if someone's never sewn with that, that's kind of what they think of. But yes, it is on there with glue. Okay. 
uh, so don't treat it with heat. That can be a little bit of an advantage to working with sewn on sequins, okay? Um, but mom, come put, train the camera here and let me get another piece of fabric. Uh, another thing I'm gonna say about dot sequins is, I actually just made um, a dance costume for my grandson, a vest, out of the dot sequin. And it was a quickie that I did and I used the dot sequin, and from the stage, it looked just as good as the expensive sequin. Yeah. Mallory's pulling from our sequin pile here. Okay, I'm coming back. Got more sequins. Woo! Okay, those of you who are longtime fans of the self-sewn wardrobe know this fabric from my maternity outfit from last year's Common Threads. I made myself a, like, a, um you know, one third sleeve sort of a crop top and pencil skirt out of this stuff. This is interesting stuff. It's on a knit, okay? And it is sewn on. Go slower. The sole, the, I just combined the word slow and whole. The sole, the, 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 soul? the whole of these sequins is in the center. And can you see that the thread is in three places? Coming. I, I think they can see it. I can okay, see it. and it looks like hexagon mm -hmm. on the back, a honeycomb sort of thing on the back. Okay, I'm going to tell you how I did this because people were like, oh, don't you have to cut the sequins out of the seam allowance on that? You know, I didn't. I did a different treatment. Look at the selvage of this stuff. It's gold. It's I know it's blue, but it's gold. Okay, you want to keep you your mean, selvages. You mean it's worth its weight it's in gold. It's worth its weight in gold, okay? You want to keep these selvage things. So what I did to seam this, and I tested this, and this might not work on everybody's serger, but this is why I am a huge baby lock serger advocate, because it worked for me. Oh, here are some of my tests. Oh. Look at that. This is just this stuff run through the serger with oh, a three-thread narrow. Hold it going this way. So, yeah. Yes, sorry. There we go. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. There are, okay, here's a little sequin kind of poking yep. out. Well, all right. Look at that. Three thread narrow. It's not exploding. It shouldn't be on your body looking like this anyway. But just so you know, <laughs> here's a three thread narrow seaming these sequins together. The sequins were small enough and my blade was strong enough that this made a comfortable seam for me. Now, what I did on some parts of it, back to the selvage, I cut my selvage into strips and I ran it along my seam. So there are three yeah. layers, okay? So sequins, right sides together, and then a strip of this knit, surged it. And then I turned it over and straight stitch so in the ditch. So basically a Hong Kong finish. Kind of, but they're together. Yeah. I got yeah. in trouble for that. No, no. Remember? One, yeah. of my, one of my first because live broadcasts. Because it's only one layer. Yes. <laughs> I just want to yeah. say, one of my first live broadcasts, I got in trouble because I said. But it's a variation of a Hong Kong finish. And it's a bound seam. And then, yeah. I just want to say, I stitched in the ditch here. I turned it over and trimmed and close. And trimmed away. And it won't ravel because That's it right. isn't it. So your selvages, okay, of these crazy ass fabrics, okay, of these sequin fabrics, they're going to be knit. They're going to be uh, mesh. Where did my, I, I'm going, the selvage is somewhere. Yeah, this one. Well, yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, they're going to be netting. They're going to be mesh. They're going to be knit. They're going to be something sheer. All of this stuff can be used to bind or stabilize seams that are on weird fabrics. ZD did a live real quick in the group. You can search for it. Um, just search for search for me or search for SSW Live, of doing Sam's lace dress. Yes. We were seaming it together on the serger, and we just put a strip of mesh that was the selvage of my fabric, of this, of this sheer embroidered fabric. So those selvages are just, like I said, like ZD clarified, well, and, worth their weight in gold. And there was a question about, oh, couldn't you just use seams, what is it, seems, seems so great? which is a product, which is a mesh product that comes on a little you can. spool. Well, yeah, where do you think they got the idea Yeah, right, for? exactly. I so, mean, in the olden days, we didn't have seams so great. Yeah, I want to bring that up. So people talk, you know, we, we talk a lot about how we use cotton organdy for interfacing, okay? The vocabulary nowadays includes 
products like interfacing and seams great and hem tape and da 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 all those products are part of you know the sewing zeitgeist and everything nowadays but it used to be that we just had to use other fabric to stiffen other fabric right. to stabilize other fabric to hem our circle skirts like like pre-bought bias tape actually that was one i didn't know that existed for a long time because mom never because i don't like it. it yeah she doesn't like it so anyway um but just check this out okay this 3tn i mean it is not bad on this there are there are some little sequins coming out that might not be that might not be comfortable and that's why i did end up binding my seams but geez, it's worth a shot. Or if this is going to be lined or not going to be super close to your body, you might be okay with it. Well, the other thing is, is you might try a stretch thread that fluffed up. I was just about to say that. Yeah. I think this was before. No, I, we had, we had stretch thread. I don't know yeah. why I didn't use it. I don't know why, um, I didn't use it on this. You Cause didn't I was, ask my I didn't, I didn't. Um, this is a totally a place where a stretch thread or even like a woolly nylon to cover that right. up would act as a seam binding, would act as seams great or something like that. But yeah, when you buy when you buy seams great and all that jazz, it's it's fine. Um, but don't waste part of what you've already bought here. You know, don't buy a, a bunch of embroidered mesh and then throw away your mesh. Selfish. And there could be a color issue. Yeah, there could be a color issue. Very. Very important. Yeah, you don't want to use black on, like, your white stretch lace, right? Uh, so just, uh, but don't feel a prisoner to those pre-made products either. Okay, so I do just want to cover real quick that when you have a straight, <laughs> like a horizontal straight uh, edge of your pattern piece, it does make, whoop, make this a lot easier. That's just my hem and process down there uh, that I showed earlier. So having that makes it a lot easier. You're already cut, you're already um, trimmed. And when I applied my um, top to Zelda's dress, here, okay, this, okay, I used stretch thread here, mom, okay? Oh, okay. So how I did this was I made the knit top smaller than the wovens, uh, or well, it's not woven, but that's kind of the mesh. Stable it's, fabric. It's not stretchy, okay? <laughs> I did that, so I had to, I had to pull the, uh, and stretch the knit bodice to that wider skirt, okay? And I sewed it like this, okay? The presser foot of my serger was inside the knit, the part that I needed to stretch was down toward the feed dogs, okay? And I could see that my sequins were out of the way. I could, you know, run my needle right along there. The sequins are all going down. Mentioned that in the beginning of the broadcast. And that was nice. I didn't stabilize this with elastic. So small, I just didn't feel like I needed to, and it was fine. Okay. Terry Audie yeah. mentions using sewer ease when sewing this and i don't know if you know what sewer ease is but it's a lubricant for your needle mm -hmm. i don't like them well, i feel like i'm introducing something into my bobbin area because it is on the needle and it does go into okay the and terry but if it works for you use yeah. it and i do want to say okay i would say though on this like not on this Right. You don't need lubricant. And Terry, you were probably talking about, the comments are a little delayed. She might so, be talking about the She might be talking about sequin. this stuff or right. the dot sequin. But I think some people think all sequin fabric's the same. I didn't sew on any sequins, did I? No, just mesh. I handled a lot of sequins. I trimmed a lot of sequins. I thought about sequins in my mind a lot. But my <laughs> needle never penetrated a sequin. Right. So it was very much sewing on the mesh. So I just want you to think about that. Yeah, those needle lubricants, you know what else? Um, people use them a lot with embroidery sometimes, too. And We I... had experience with a thread lubricant, remember? Yep. Well, that's the same thing. I know. I mean, it's similar. But it's, I, yeah. A lot of them are like glycerin or, um, what's the other one? No, the, I don't. Uh, they make me a little uncomfortable, Yeah, too. they can, they can also have a buildup, so you gotta be careful. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. So, yeah, when I, I just, I just put this right on there, it was no problem. I made, I made the top 
you know, I did these, the shoulder seams and everything. Okay, and then I wanna talk about real quick where this joins here. Okay, this isn't extremely attractive uh, to me. Okay, I'm, when I saw this, you know, in my mind, the way I designed this, I didn't like that like a little bit of my mesh was showing. Okay, like this. I think that's better. Okay. Yeah, they can see how it hangs. I, you know, and I got it as close as I could. I did, a, I did a good job, you know, getting close to the sequins. So what I did is I incorporated a, a satin, it was purple satin belt. Yeah. I don't have it. Um, a little sash. Yeah, a little sash. Okay, so this, okay, the belt thing, <laughs> the sash thing, you all should be using this in a number of applications. Yeah. When we, we get a lot of discussion of pattern matching in the group, okay? So someone will make like a striped top uh, bodice, you know, to a, to a dress, and then they'll cut a circle skirt out of the stripe, and then somebody's like, oh, those stripes don't match. They can't match the whole way around. It's a circle going onto something straight. And so I understand though, it can look a little jarring Okay, yes. because it's like they're matching for a little bit and then they're getting further and further apart. If you want to break up something disparate like that or like tie it together. So if you have your white fabric with your red stripes and your, you know, white circle skirt with the red stripes, try a red belt to just tie that all together. And so actually, you know, this is kind of cute. My purple satin belt on here, it really looked good. And what it was, everyone, it was a tie from a cardigan that I owned in like ninth or 10th grade and I saved it, okay, yeah. after the cardigan. So now I am, I am like 14 years older than that. I have had two children and I used that satin belt from that cardigan <laughs> and I just kept it hanging with my belts. You know, it was, it was a good, it was a good move, okay? I'm not a, it was, it was a good like hoarding move, okay? Good, uh, don't, 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 uh, don't get rid of everything just based on time, okay? So if you are seeing that though, and you're like, man, I work so hard on this dress and like the sequins look great, but it's just a little uh, there, a little, a little something that stops the eye that, you know, makes it not look as nice. A little satin belt there would be great. And what I did was I put um, little crocheted loops. I think they're a little oversized, but the belt was rather wide and I didn't want it to get um, scrunched up. Uh, necessarily so I crocheted these little belt loops to go on there real quick and it was fabulous so that is how to sew with crazy ass sequin fabric it's not as intimidating I think as a lot of people might make it out to be when you see it on the bolt at the fabric store and it's $25 a yard you're like I'm not, not even gonna mess with that that stuff's crazy you really aren't ideally I'm going to be sewing through the sequins you are going to be sewing on the mesh in the way that I showed you and then you're going to be able to have a lovely mermaid dress go back and watch this video from the beginning because I did talk about things about uh cutting layout I talked about how the fabric is sheer uh, and how I'm using it for a kid and what that can mean and then how you might uh, want to change your techniques a bit for making something for an adult. You're getting so, a little love mess, love hearts. Mwah, thank you, everybody. And then I'll do a live broadcast about my um, sheer dress uh, some other time, but it was very convenient to have it. All right, well, uh, so long and so happy.